So when I play at this stage, I don't even think about sound imagination much. It's already there somehow, in the tips of my fingers, in, in the palm sensations, in my body sensation, so I can really kind of put it aside and really focus on this main part of mental practice and mental preparation. Hmm. Why do we need self-confidence? <laughs> 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 what are the benefits of self-confidence in our playing? Uh, we all, uh, musicians, uh, especially acad academic, academically trained uh, pianists, we have that sensation of, uh, you know, hot cheek and cold hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I frequently saw people doing something like this. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, fear energetically associated with ice, with mm -hmm. something being frozen, freeze. with a freeze. And that freeze of mind affects the, the you know, frozen sensation in our body and hands. So that's why we need to wear those. We do, I mean, pianists do wear uh, gloves before playing. And some pianists try to use some medicine or maybe even alcohol, <laughs> some drugs to relax their mind because everything has just got so stiff and so frozen, really. So what, it, what kind of energy it is? Why is it helpful with our frozen state? Uh, I guess because f ice and fire, fire goes over the ice, mm -hmm. so it must be something hot. Self-confidence energy um, is energy of fire. So, what are the um, elements? Fast, first of all, because also, as we know, when our mind and body frozen, everything gets just slower. It's like your mind is strapped, you can't really think, and your, your, your muscles also get slow and frozen. So, um, first of all, it's fast energy. But fast energy is when uh, you not constrained, you reactive. You can, uh, and your brain works with lightning speed, very fast. Exactly. Like, very fast. Yeah. And uh, so maybe another example of this fast energy is the speed of lightning, speed of thought, mm -hmm. very fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Later we're going to make this exercise which involves body movement and through the fast body movement it will also hopefully will help you to feel that energy faster. Which now we need to talk about direction. So we talk about the speed and ah. texture. Now direction of this energy, again when you're frozen you become more introvert. It's like energy goes in. So we need the energy which is outgoing. Yeah. Fast and outgoing. Okay. And the last is the distance. Again, when you're frozen, you probably, if someone asks you to speak, you will speak very softly because you are intimidated. You will be like, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, ni puha ni pera. Ah, yeah, thank you, you know. You, you're not gonna be like, yeah, thank you, yeah, you know. So it's, it's frozen energy, it's uh, inwards energy, and it's, it's not far going. <laughs> Let's put it this way, we're closed up. So the third element would be far going. And I as don't know. As far as it can be. Exactly, and I don't know if, if you were told, but still many times play as you know at the last row of the big hall everyone can hear you so to sum up it's a fiery energy which is self-confidence energy is a fiery energy which is fast outgoing and far going and um, I also suggest students who have still problems to grasp that, I, that energy is to remember when they are angry. So anger has that fast energy and far going and outwards energy actually. <laughs> but I suggest to take away the pain and bitterness of that. 
but just kind of focus on that, you know, a fast reaction. You know, there is no slow reaction and anger. <laughs> First, we're going to add self-confidence and posture. And then when you're comfortable there, then we're going to wrap it up with um, true voice. And when you wrap it up with true voice, then self-confidence is going to be there, but it's not going to be everything that you focus on. You know, you know this probably saying, what you focus on will expand. So it's kind of like your self-confidence is there, but because you focus on this, on it a little bit less, it will be a little bit, it will be contained. It's not going to be like this. <laughs> the image that came into my mind, uh, it's like we inflate and inflate and inflate in the self-confidence and then going through voice and this, this singularity goes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, cool. But it's Very with cool. everything, you probably already experienced that. When you were focusing on musical image and form, it was um, expanded, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then when you, okay, you said wrap it up with the timing, then it becomes smaller in your mind. And yeah. that also means you focus on those faster, because it's smaller. Yes, and eventually when we're going to look at everything and go through our mind and like I said, it shouldn't take more than five seconds at the end of the day, with a true voice, you focus on self-confidence and you feel elements of form, you know, through timing, you know, and musical image. And all of this, again, it's just like with a speed of light, done. And that's what we need to train. And then if you are, you know, just starting, it will take you so much time just to focus on musical image and then choosing the right timing and then remembering the part of the story. Oh, there is also self-confidence, wait, there is also posture. And at the end of the day, how do I also add a true voice to all of this? <laughs> so this is the biggest part of our practice now I'm going to be in the very last finishing line. Uh, integrating self-confidence into constant singing, internal singing while we're playing. We make sure that every step, every interval we play, we express self-confidence. So self-confidence is going to be sustained during our playing. And that's a very big shift from, okay, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I go on stage, you know, and I start playing and then Oh, it's a bit different now, you know. <laughs> uh, you create something like a bubble around you that protects, protects, protects from distractions. Mm -hmm. You're like in this uh, shield. You have this shield mm -hmm. of energy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Again, because you're playing with the outgoing energy, so you actually create, I like what you said, it's almost like a sphere around you and th through which you're actually speaking up instead of just only listening to audience and being silent. In this case, it's a failure. <laughs> we need both ways. I'm not saying you just need to constantly speak, but they're always a good, a successful performance is a, like a good conversation where you listen, you speak, but you also feel the feedback of the audience and that while listening the feedback from the audience, that inspires you to co-create. And so you co-create together with audience. It's important that you start with your output, with the speaking and saying your message, and then you start getting the input, the listening from the audience, and then you both continue and it's a beautiful cycle. Um, if you don't start speaking up, if you go on stage and imagine that you're not performing, imagine that you are there to say something. If we could make a, some kind of metaphor here, analogy with playing, if you don't have self-confidence, you go on stage and you look, hi, this is me, I'm going to place, what? We can't hear you! Give her the microphone! What's wrong with her? So that's what's happening, you know, basically, when we play.
They need to hear our message. All right, so expressing and sustaining self-confidence on stage through intonation helps us to create a shield that would initially protect us from the thoughts and doubts and uh, maybe judgment or it's not necessarily thoughts of audience. It could be like actually not focusing on you as well is a big distraction. Um, what else? Ah, uh, maybe I, sh I should probably say it at the beginning, but the self-confidence helps to make everything a little bit bigger. It is like difference between uh, your speech in everyday life and your speech on the stage, stage speech. So it's a little bit bigger, maybe not a little. And it is important because if you are going to a theater, none of the actors going on the stage without makeup. You have to amplify everything for the audience to grab the expression on the face. Um, so that's what also self-confidence does, like a magnifying glass, make everything much more expressive. Mm -hmm. It allows you to start actually speaking first and by doing this you actually start taming your audience. And also a new instrument. I found that um, a lot of stage fright comes from me from playing on an instrument that does not answer to me, you know? And that creates, you, you try to control it with compulsive tension and that doesn't help. Again, imagine that you are, your instrument is like a wild horse or a bull, you know, that you need to tame. And you're not going to tame it by trying to adjust to the, to the horse. No, you have to have your will. This is what I want. And somehow then instrument adjusts to you. And it doesn't take more than a few minutes. And then you hold it in your hands rather than you smashed by it. <laughs> That's how usually it feels. So you not only tame the audience, you also tame your instrument. And somehow also the whole venue, the whole hall, the whole space around you. It's very important. Let's go to some exercises that it will help us to develop this energy. There are two, right? So the very first one is actually just to focus on speaking of that phrase. Listen to me. It has to have this fast, outgoing, uh, far going um, energy and it has to be pronounced in, in declamatory way. And the second exercise is to add a um, body movement to it and start speeding up. So let's try the first one first. If you could think about a Soviet Union poet and how they were speaking. Yeah. I don't know, Mayakovsky, imagine Mayakovsky, right? They were really speaking in, the, in that declamatory way. And it has this, that ta-da rhythm, I found it very helpful. In school I recite uh, Mayakovsky on stage. So. <laughs> I still yeah. remember. I had, I had some experience. <laughs> Why are you reciting it with self-confidence? Uh, yeah, yeah, I were very confident. It was the fourth grade. Okay. Okay. Listen to me. Oh, wow. That was really good. Listen to me. I can oh, even, do you like it? Yeah, I can even see Vladimir Lenin in it. <laughs> uh, words like Я знаю, город будет. Я знаю, саду цвесть, потому что в стране советской такие люди есть. Да, я, наверное, напутал все, но, в общем, короче говоря, I had an experience. So, yeah. Punch like this, and it is important how you come back. Ta-dam, 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 ta-dam. And so now, good, and now add to that, listen, listen to me. And now this gives really nice sensation of far going, actually, and outwards energy. 
Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen All right. to me. Now imagine that you're on the stage of Bolshoi um, Zal, the Great Hall, and to the very top, right there, the last row. Listen to me. Aha. Listen to me. You see? For me, there's a difference. Second time was a little worse. But yeah, but the first, first time, time was happened. really good and your voice opened up as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's try a few times more. Listen to me. Good. Listen to me. Good. Mm -hmm. Well done. But I was also thinking about acceleration as actually maybe I have a more accurate description of than fast. Because fast is kind of like, listen to me, you know? But here you go kind of like, maybe a little bit slow, but at the end you really accelerate. Listen to me, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah, I think it's, it's more accurate. Mm. So now we're going to accelerate, exactly. So let's say now is the third step. So you go, listen to me. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, and faster. I hope I won't break it. <laughs> listen to me, 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 listen to me. Okay, very good. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you have the materials for the video. The <laughs> If this video is not gonna get 10 likes, I don't know what else will. <laughs> <laughs> How to sing. So let's talk about, um, so I suggest this. First, we're gonna kind of make, um, we mention some essential rules about singing and playing, and then we'll, we'll actually gonna talk about singing and playing. Uh, for me, the very important thing is to keep singing slow, mm -hmm. but, being able to feel that fast energy mm -hmm. between the notes. So to find this balance between singing slowly with intonation and at the same time have a far projected energy and fast. So when you sing with self-confidence it's important that you don't start just singing oh, very fast. <laughs> when you're gonna sing with self-confidence only, you will notice how arrogant it's gonna sound. Because, I mean, it's gonna sound exactly what you just, you know, perform for us. And so that's why, again, we need to integrate it in the system and connect it to image and form, and later to even to be under the umbrella of voice, true voice. So it would be just like a pinch of salt in the soup, not just salt itself. <laughs> so when you sing with self confidence and you feel, oh my God, this is a bit too much, it's okay. It's absolutely fine. That's how it's supposed to be at that step of singing. <clears throat> All right. What is important about <clears throat> playing with self-confidence? Posture. Mm -hmm. Posture is important. Mm -hmm. You need to connect uh, this energy with posture. Why? Actually, it's for a very practical reason. It's because, remember, we were introducing posture, um, connecting it to intonation in the first book. That's it. It's just because, you know, you want to start playing with the correct posture as soon as possible. But you see, after adding so many layers of book two, of book three, um, what might happen is that focusing on bigger picture, while focusing on bigger picture, you will forget about posture. And you will not even notice. You won't be... The awareness of posture will not be even in the picture. Because posture is something unlike, you know, sound imagination and hand motion, or maybe even phrasing. 
that uh, doesn't really go to muscle memory because any emotion, any feedback from the audience, because you will constantly get those waves of energy while playing and your natural response would be kind of dance together with it. But actually that will um, prevent you from expressing yourself directly through the sound, directly through the movements and will be actually standing in the way of your technique as well. So, adding posture to self-confidence, it's just not, it's just to remind yourself and just making sure it does not fade away after adding so many layers. I wanted to say about the, in, in, the stiffness, the sensation of stiffness mm. that may, may occur and that you don't need, you don't want to fear of it because this is a consequence of that self-confident mm -hmm. energy. Exactly. Um, so again, it's <clears throat> because the energy that we create is, is more static rigid in a way uh, it's not it's not female energy it's more male energy and so we want to I mean it will naturally affect the sensations in our muscles so it will bring some some amount of stiffness but that's okay because we're going to you know again it's gonna be just a little part I mean, it's not going to go into unhealthy, um, dysfunctional tension in our hands because everything is under control. So, mm. But yes, you might experience this natural feeling of stiffness when you play with self-confidence. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about um, order, importance of order. Mm -hmm and as well as with uh, timing practice we need to maintain the correct order to teach ourselves quickly prepare that's how I did understand it uh, because if we have that order in mind we know this should be like this always and it, it uh, gives us an ability to Speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, and do quick preparation. Speed up so our the attention. Speed up, mm. yeah. So the order is musical image, then musical form, then timing, then self confidence. And posture, because we're connecting it together with the. So image. self confidence and, and posture is like one, one unit. block. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And why do we make it that way? Why do we not start, let's say, with self-confidence? If you try to start with self-confidence first, self-confidence and posture, okay. And then you, in your mind, so you, you tune your mind into this energy. Got it. Next you go into, okay, let's think about musical image of the piece. Oh, it's a nice spring you know, beautiful, you know, music. And then, oh, it's the beginning of the story. <gasps> okay, it's an animated timing. If you don't, if you go that way, by the time you finish your preparation, the energy of self-confidence is out of the window. You're losing it. Where, if you just go in your mind into the image of music, the form, the timing, and then at the end you add self-confidence, somehow you will play with self-confidence, but just because in your mind you previously went through all those colors and textures, they will be included in the self-confidence. So the self-confidence is not, you know, black anymore, it actually has rainbows of, of um, musical image, musical form and timing in it. So the reason to go image for image form time image form timing self confidence and posture is to sustain self confidence when you start playing and not losing not 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 losing it. Mm -hmm. It will be a bit different when we go a little bit further and reach the uh, true voice uh, stage because then everything will be felt 
bit more different and you will actually go with self-confidence first, which will already contain image form and timing. But every stage needs to have its own time. At this specific moment, you need to train to develop this block in your mind, in this order. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at this mental exercises again and remind you very much timing, image form and timing exercises. But it also now has a step three. So step one is usually we choose the image and timing. Step two, we learn how to focus on self-confidence and posture and image form and timing. And step three, now after that, you add a true voice um, kind of layer. And I've written through detached state of mind, feel self-confidence and posture that includes image form and timing. And that's again <laughs> the most the, the closest the closest description I could find to express what's going on in my mind. If if making all three steps is too hard for you, then I suggest you to just stick to step two. Make all these exercises just to um, kind of you know. Um, Con um, consolidate the feeling of self-confidence in your sensations and then maybe the next day or a few even days later you can add step three. In this lesson definitely I would like you to sing uh, just one interval first with intonation and then with self-confidence and remember also posture and intonation. And let's see the difference. Uh. these new sensations into singing motifs and phrases and sentences. Go through step one, step two, step three, and when you feel that through detached state of mind, you can feel self-confidence in the posture that includes image form and timing, you will get there. <laughs> you will feel what I just read. Then you start singing motifs, and then you start singing phrases and then sentences. So all that will prepare you for the playing exercises where you, what you've just done in the preparation and then singing exercises, you copy and paste into playing exercise. And you play through the phrasing exercises again, the same way, with everything. Okay, and then practice. And then practice, so this is actually almost how your how you would analyze a new piece that's basically it that's the steps you're gonna go through and in book four i sent to you we're gonna have the whole practice plan and where it's very nicely just deliciously it's very attractive just have the whole map in front of you how many days what these days are for you know it's great i mean i love it i mean sometimes it inspires me to actually start learning new piece just because i can you know check every box <laughs> and it feels good <laughs> um, so yes eventually you would try with self-confidence practice and try to approach a new etude or if you wish you can just add uh, self-confidence and true voice steps into that piece that you just practiced with timing uh, i'm not even sure i feel so I'm comfortable talking about this very surreal things because it's not tangible. We're not even talking about sound imagination or hand motion or even phrasing. I mean, it might sound so wishy-washy, but I mean, it's our inner sensations. 
<laughs> uh, nobody but you talking about it, and that's <laughs> and that's great because we want we want to to have a person who talk about the, those things. I mean to talk to talk myth methodically, and uh, you provide you you provide very very detailed very uh, and of course this is i i understand that even now this now may be the last page of <laughs> of the system if we have the time ahead years ahead i hope but this is this is uh, great that now we can talk about it and we need to talk about it to talk methodically to try uh, at least <laughs> I wanted to mention on the last lesson uh, on timing when <laughs> we sit uh, and um, try to exercise like um, reading in the mind <laughs> this uh, this may too seem to wishy-washy but very very I won't say very 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 <laughs> so yeah very good very good that we talk about this. That's very good. And I will keep talking about this. Uh, I, I also have my blog and I have 70, 70 subscribers. <laughs> and I, I'm talking about this. Uh, and I hope in future may, may I, we will meet more people who will talk about this methodically. So it's more like bringing structure and uh, formless yeah. things. We need, to, mm. we need to build something that like uh, help us to orient in that crazy world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we, we, we need to uh, do attempt. Uh, and what the great thing you do is you uh, try to uh, bring an order to build uh, a, a skill a skill of uh, feeling, uh, of organized feeling. And on our very first uh, meeting I was uh, talking about Bernstein and motor control theory, uh, dexterity and its, and its development, that's called the book, uh, to describe the, the thing, dexterity, what is it? And he, he, he tells that we cannot discover dexterity like we, what we may discover a mole, mo, new molecule or new uh, chemical element. Mm -hmm. We cannot discover it. Mm -hmm. All we can do is to build a system that can... Uh, so, so we can build dexterity, we can build some... You build the system that... Um, for me it looks like Bernstein theory because you have these layers mm -hmm. and... Um, um, you, <laughs> that, that fascinates me because you, uh, you say that you don't know a anything about, <laughs> about it but you intuitively go through it. Of course you have very big experience in uh, in conservatory, in uh, teaching, in self um, overcoming problems with hands. So that's cool that we're doing this job. We, I'm, I'm happy we do. We did uh, so far mm -hmm. half a year. We we're meeting for six months, mm -hmm. and time goes so quickly. And uh, well. Oh, that's so kind of you to say all those words. I appreciate them a lot. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for the teaching. <laughs> thank you. It's hard to do something innovative when, you know, you don't belong anywhere and you don't really have much support and do it for 25 years. <laughs> but I still keep believing that in the future pianists will see the need of learning how to organize the feelings, you know, to express, but... Um. I, I think the problem is because uh, is, uh, um, many of the teachers, they are professionals of high class and they don't even know that their problems like this, they are, exist. 
and uh, now uh, as far as I see now when uh, when musical higher musical education becomes more affordable for more people goes uh, to that more people not from like you know real musical families like from 60 years old you go through all the stages so I'm not kind of, of a guy I, I, I'm not going through musical school even I start with somewhere somewhere here I play trumpet and uh, now I'm studying in university and I had problems and your channel helped me because it brings the system but that, those problems, my teacher, my professor, and assistants, uh, and every, everybody um, around me even don't know that there may exist on that stage. I think that if at least we know that we have those layers, we can experiment with them, and lessons are not becoming like uh, administrator and object, but like a real research of two persons but one is experienced less less an experience and they together research but even though that this guy is more experienced he still doesn't know so many things and they together can build interesting because he learns from his from his experience he knows very little but his uh, desire to know because desire is very important when your student doesn't does not have a desire thus of course this is very bad but you may find why he does not have a desire maybe he has so many problems with it maybe he's so overwhelmed even when you have um, an amazing system to follow and you're like okay in six months um, I can practice every day for four hours and I can completely retrain myself and then, you know, the world is my oyster, you know, and, and go on, which obviously everyone will see how you're going to do it in January and December. Uh, but still, you have to have a positive energy to keep doing the things that you even know work. And the big problem behind um, any teaching is how to keep yourself uh, mentally healthy and emotionally healthy um, to do, well, like with anything in life. So, and I think very important to have this community of students, of pianists, and meet um, weekly through Zoom or any other online platforms to actually just discuss and talk to each other more as um, an empathy body <laughs> rather than uh, our competitors. So to bring this, you know, mental health and uh, vulnerability and honesty and openness and authenticity into classical musical world I think it's very important and where you know where you able to open up uh, freely to people that you maybe never never even met in person you just meet online and to say oh this is how I feel and other people just really you know feel for you and they validate what you feel first of all and then maybe they even say, well, maybe that's, that's a solution. Maybe you can do this and maybe you can do that. And maybe next time it happens, you will feel this way and you will react that way and you don't take it to your heart. Because there's so much abuse going on. And so um, generally I um, provide my students this safe space um, as a kind of a safe community which I think it's very, very important to not, not only make a progress, but actually go on. <laughs> um, remember the breakdown you had uh, when we were practicing with phrasing and everything? 
I mean, I could have included you into those um, sessions, but I think in the future that's also the right thing to do. And for you, um, if you're gonna heal and help and uh, also research with other of your students, it's a very good thing to do, create a support community, empathy body group. Mm.